This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 1.19. These problems will give you practice on interpreting Fisher projections and interconverting between Fisher projections and the other representations of molecular structure. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018, and you can find a bunch of other chemistry videos and information on how to match those videos to your particular course's textbook at protonguru.com. Once we've learned about Fisher projections, we should have three common ways to represent the three-dimensional shape of molecules. We have the line bond structures, the Newman projections, and the Fisher projection. And one of the great challenges to students studying stereochemistry is that we're now asked to be able to assign chirality or molecular handedness to molecules in any representation. And although assigning chirality or molecular handedness seems like a daunting task, we're very familiar with looking at individual people and knowing about right-handed and left-handedness. So if we think about looking at a person who's doing push-ups from the side like this, this is the person's right hand and this is the person's left hand. So understand the handedness of that person is a relatively easy task for us. We also know that if the person's facing us doing push-ups and we can't really see the person's feet back here, this is the person's right hand, this is the person's left hand. And if a person is walking up to us with their hands towards us like they're going to hug us, we can tell this is this person's right hand and this is the person's left hand. Well, these three scenarios that I've just described, doing the push-ups, doing the push-ups facing us, or standing up walking towards us, these are representations of people that we can correspond with line bond, Newman projection, or Fisher projection structures. All I need to do is correlate this right hand, left hand, head, and feet with the corresponding parts of the line bond structure above it. So this is the molecule's head, this is the molecule's right hand, this is the molecule's left hand, and this would be the molecule's feet. If we imagine juxtaposing this person's outline over this tetrahedral line bond representation, if I wanted to convert this same exact molecular structure into a Newman projection, well, I could think about this in terms of turning this person who's doing push-ups to face me. And I say, well, the head of this person, the head of this person, the head of this molecule was a hydrogen. So there's the head. The person's right hand was here, which was here, which is represented by the blue R in the molecule. So the right hand of the molecule is still that R group. The left hand of the molecule was this L. The left hand of this person doing push-ups facing us is right there as well. The feet we can't really see. They're kind of hidden behind the person or behind this circle in the Newman projection. But it's a CF3 group, so we can have these three fluorines sticking out from behind that circle in the Newman projection to show us there's a hidden carbon, yes, but it has fluorines on it. Well, now, what if we're asked to convert this line bond structure into a Fisher projection? Well, remember that a Fisher projection, by definition, has horizontal lines that are coming towards us, and the other lines are leaning away from us. So if we're trying to draw an analogy to human handedness, we imagine this picture for Fisher projections. So if I have this molecule in the line bond structure, and I need to make a Fisher projection, I first imagine somebody doing push-ups like this. I say, well, this is the person's right hand. And I look over at my Fisher projection and say, well, this is the right hand. The left hand is here. That's the L. The head would correspond to this position. And then the feet would be the CF3 group. And I put the CF3 group where the feet would be on the person approaching me. And that's a relatively easy way to think about molecular handedness and correlating it with chirality assignments and interconverting between different structures. So now if I give you a different molecule drawn the line bond structure and I ask you to draw the Newman and Fisher projections for it as a standard type of organic chemistry class question, it should be relatively easy for you to do that. If you think about this in terms of a person doing push-ups, that's the head. This is the person's right hand that's towards you. This is the person's left hand. And this is the person's feet. Then if you construct your Newman projection, say, well, the thing in front is the person's head. And that's a hydrogen, so we'll put the hydrogen there. This is the person's right hand. Well, the right hand was this chlorine. This was the left hand. That's the CH3 group in this case. And the feet is the CF3 group. We can't see that. It's hidden behind this circle or behind the person's body as he's doing push-ups facing us. And now let's say we wanted to make the Fisher projection. We set this up and we say, well, if someone's facing me, this is their right hand. 
and I figured out in my line bond structure that is the chlorine. I better put the chlorine there. H was the head, CF3 was the feet, and the left hand, if I look over here, was a methyl group. So that's a relatively quick way to convert from a line bond to a Newman to a Fischer projection. Now let's say we're given a Newman projection and we're asked to draw the Fischer projection and the wedge or hash line structure. Or maybe we're just asked to assign the R or S label and it's going to be easier for us to do it if it's in the line bond or the Fischer projection. Well now I look at my Newman projection and I imagine this person doing push-ups. I say, well this is the person's head while well, they're doing push-ups. So if I draw my tetrahedron to draw the line bond structure, I say, well this is the person's head. And then the person's feet doing push-ups is hidden behind this person. That is given by these things sticking out from behind it. It's a carbon with those three hydrogens sticking out from behind. So that's the feet. And then is this the person's right hand or left hand? Well, if they're facing me, that's their right hand. So the person's right hand, the Newman projection's right hand side of the molecule there, is the OH. The OH has to go then where the right hand of the person doing push-ups would be sitting. This is the left hand of the person doing push-ups. This is the left hand of the person doing push-ups facing me, which is the ethyl group. Well, now that I've already figured out what the hands and feet and head are, it's very easy to make the Fischer projection. The head was the hydrogen we figured out. The right hand was the OH. Let's put that on the right hand of the Fischer projection stick man. The left hand was the ethyl group. And the feet the hidden CH3 that was behind the circle in the Newman projection. Finally, the last permutation of this type of question, what if I have the Fischer projection, I need to draw the Newman projection or the line bond structure? Well, the Fischer projection is probably the easiest to work with because you know right away that's the person's head. So if I go and draw the Newman projection, fill in the head, I'll abbreviate it CHO for this CHO unit. This is the Fischer projection man's right hand, which is where the hydrogen is. Hydrogen for the right hand. If I look at the left hand, that's an ethyl group. And then the feet is a CH3. Remember the Newman projection hides one carbon behind the circle, so only those H's will stick out from behind the circle. And now if I want to make the wedge and hash line structure, the feet is the CH3 group we said. The head was the CHO group we discovered. This is the right hand of the person doing push-ups. The right hand of the molecule was this hydrogen. And the left hand of the molecule was the ethyl group. And now you very easily switch between Fischer projection, Newman projection, and wedge and hash line structures. Now the last three problems will be relatively quick now that we know how to interconvert between different structures. We're going to have a prelude to this by assigning R and S labels within these Fischer projections to show just how easy it is. If you remember that the Fischer projection by definition has horizontal lines coming towards us and vertical lines going away from us, it's kind of like a butterfly climbing up a ladder, then we never have to reorient the molecule to assign R and S. We just assign our priorities first and fourth, third, second priority is the ethyl group. We look for our fourth priority. It's towards us. That's backwards of ideal, so we count backwards, 3 to 2 to 1. So that is the R isomer. The turning a steering wheel that way would be the right-hand turn. That's the R. Same thing with this structure. We assign 1. The whole bottom is 2. The methyl is 3. This is 4. So we always ignore the 4, but we need to know which way it's pointing. It's pointing towards us. Well, that's backwards of ideal, so we have to count 3, 2, 1 instead of 1, 2, 3. So that top stereocenter is the R isomer. Do the same thing to the bottom. This time the H is pointed away from us. One and two and three. Fourth priority pointed away from us means we can count one to two to three. That's going in a counterclockwise direction. That bottom stereo center is in the S configuration. So now it's really quick to assign R and S labels to Fisher projections. So then if we face a problem like this, we can easily redraw it as a Fisher projection if necessary. So we find the stereo center, the one with four different groups on it. We assign the priorities 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this is a case where the fourth priority is in the plane of the page. We've got to reorient this molecule somehow. So a quick way to do this is to use the push-up man technique. Convert this to a Fisher projection, which we just saw. It's pretty quick to assign an RS label. So if we think about this analogy to human-handedness and fill in the prioritizations we've done, we see that 
We can now redraw this as a Fisher projection, keeping in mind this analogy to human handedness by taking this push up representation. The arm forward is one, and that's the person's right hand, left hand, feet, and head. And then you put the second priority where the feet are, just like that. The fourth priority where the head is, like that. Match those up. The third priority is the person's left hand. If they're facing you, that's their left hand, which is three. That's the methyl group, methyl group. And finally, we have this aldehyde group as priority one. That's the right hand. And in this Fisher projection, the fourth priority group is going away from us. So we can just count in a procession from one to two to three. That looks like you're doing a left-hand turn of the steering wheel. That's counterclockwise. That is the S configuration.